only four. <laughs> no, now, we're going to talk about Swansea stories, okay? So if you're looking for facts and information, you can come to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> Everything I'm going to say is to be taken with a pinch of salt, so don't get offended by anything. I'm not going to say anything offensive, but if you like, I love that painting. I once had a woman crying on the front desk because her favourite painting was now, so I don't feel get quite attached to paintings. Don't get offended if I say something about a painting that you like. But I'm going to start off by talking about people, which is down there. But don't worry, I'm not going to make you walk down there. <laughs> Stand right here. And you can see those ones right ahead, if you're not these ladies. <laughs> these ladies. Come join. Come join. But right ahead, Sorry. on the bottom, Left hand corner, you will see two people, two uh, facing up two people. They're actually not people, they're actually rejected dummies from Thunderbirds. <laughs> have a look, have a close look. Next time you go down there, have a good look at them. They're definitely <laughs> Thunderbirds puppets, and I won't be told otherwise. <laughs> Next to it is a picture, it's not actually of a person, but somebody said to the artist, Will you paint me an eccentric? So the next one next to it is an eccentric. It's not a specific person. And then the rest of it is mainly dead mares. I don't want to say about that. They're not here anymore, but they're on the wall. Anyway, let's go in here because this is where all the interesting stuff is. All the interesting stuff is on the wall. Right, so this Started off with only one, and now look, we got crowds. <laughs> it's this top, it just attracts people. I don't know if all of you knew what I'm saying, but I like to think that you just attracted them sparkly colours. Very pretty. Yes, gorgeous. <laughs> Somebody said to me, Julia, said, you look gorgeous. I said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've got some personal collections with the gallery. And I want to talk to you about this particular piece here. Now, before I talk about it, it is really important to note one thing. Some of these frames will say things about the pictures. But what you've got to remember is these frames are quite often wrong. Because we recycle frames in the gallery because we're eco-friendly in the gallery. So when we need a new frame, we don't just build a new one. We just use one off an old tacky painting. So some of these are fantastic paintings, and we put them on nice ones, okay? So the subject of this particular piece, the nun in this one, is actually my mother. <laughs> <laughs> now, I said to my mother, you should do a nude. She said, no, I don't want to do a nude. They're too self-conscious, I can't do a nude. She said, and what I will do, though, is I quite often go around his house, and I usually ask to dress the nun. <laughs> So that's why she's dressed as a nun. Because the artist owns a nun's habit. I don't know why he owns a nun's habit. And I don't want to ask. So, so moving on, I'm just going to talk about this gentleman here. Now, you might recognise him as Brian McFadden from Westlife. <laughs> now, at the moment, Brian McFadden from Westlife is singing into a giant flower. I don't know if he knew it was a flower at the time because he was apparently tank tank. <laughs> now, I'm not sure what he's doing. What are you doing there? <laughs> all right. Anyway, there are other videos on this. This is a couple of them. So they were all taken by Kev Tonga, because it was at the time when we were in a relationship together. So one of them you will see. Come back here later, watch the whole thing, or just come back to the gallery on another day, support the gallery and see it all. But you will see a firework being set off in a greenhouse. Now, this is not an artistic statement. This is because you misread the instructions. <laughs> so the instruction said, store in a dry, cold place. So you put it in a, a greenhouse and you put some other ones in a shed. And you, later on, as well, you'll see a shed on fire. And it's because he thought you also had to light it in the shed. <laughs> so bear with it. I'm not 100 percent sure why he's whacking this rock. I actually don't think this was meant to be in there. I think somebody just set the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to this one here. Now, there's not much to say about this one, except that there's some ships on the sea, it's gray, it's a bit cloudy, and it's got Monet written on it. But 
I mean, Lovely. I know much about that. This gentleman here is more important. His name is the Beast. And I know a lot of people might be freaked out about it, you might be a bit creeped out about it, but just remember the corpse inside is dead <laughs> and it won't move. So if you can smell something in this gallery, which a lot of people say they can smell, so it smells. It's dead. <laughs> now, this is an interesting piece. This piece. <laughs> the day after. <laughs> now, what do you think it looks like? Because that's what the artist has said it is. But I think, I think it is actually somebody's grazed knee. <laughs> so, what do you think it looks like? You can almost see two people, but that doesn't still go out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what my studio walls used to look like. Yeah. So. Like, I think this is garlic mayo. <laughs> I think that's what that is. And this is the naan, or whatever they put them in. I don't need to do that. <laughs> do you know, do you know, does anyone know where this is? That's right, it's Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's interesting, the way the curator has deliberately done this is you get the really detailed ones here because back in the days, we didn't have camera phones. They didn't used to have camera phones. They didn't even have cameras. So they wanted to take a picture of something. They had to get an artist to paint it or draw it, which is why some of these are really detailed. And then as we move up to the modern age, we lose the ability to paint. <laughs> <laughs> these ones are terrible. <laughs> say it is. A lot of people will tell you that this is actually the tarmac from Wine Street. That it is actually the floor on Wine Street and it's chewing gum. Now that's wrong. It is actually a scan of my liver. You've got a face of absolute disgust. Have we offended you today? Me? Yes. Um, no, that's just my natural face. Oh, <laughs> I won't actually that <laughs> Right, we're going to talk about this one here. It's this blue one here. This is by Bob, age four. <laughs> now, if this was an adult's painting, we wouldn't have put it up on the wall, because obviously it's just quite childish and immature. And personally, but they can't paint, obviously. It's a colour's wrong. Colour's wrong. Bill's not blue. And also, he's gone outside the lines. <laughs> he's outside the lines. Outside the lines, I think. It's got to be inside the lines. So, I mean, if it was an adult, we'd ridicule it mercilessly and wonder why the gallery could possibly let us come to put it on the walls. But it's because it's by far the age four. <laughs> possibly five. And we're going to come right here. This is a bit of a tight squeeze, so, you know, don't control the mass down. No, I I know what it is, when you come in here, your eyes are first drawn to the videos on the screen. That's because you can see movement, which is not what you're doing. You need to move faster. <laughs> Well, 
Construct, let's move. Come on. Yeah, move. Anna, move. Faster, faster. Come on, run. Now, this is a very interesting piece. I say interesting, but it is actually a photograph of the most boring sport known to man. <laughs> that's not an opinion, that's provable facts. Now, even though we might all despise this sport for being as dull as it is, it's a very important sport, and the reason is so that middle class people can easily identify each other. Because <laughs> if they're not carrying around golf clubs that most people can't afford, how are they going to know who? Now, you might be thinking, there well, was a lot of, it's very bland, that pit. A lot of the people, they're all the same. A lot of people very similar. But it's actually quite a diverse piece. Because this lady here is wearing pink stripes. <laughs> and nobody else is. And he's wearing orange. And that guy's wearing blue. And that's wearing green. And if that isn't the, di the definition of diversity, I don't know what it is. I mean, I don't know what it is. But I'm assuming that's what it means. <laughs> Anyway, this particular piece, the artist wanted to take a nice landscape for this, but the golfers were like, no, we play here every day and we demand to be in the picture. And I don't know why, but she called this piece entitlement. <laughs> <laughs> and my head is in my mouth, it's disgusting. Mm. But I'm going to take you on to a piece that I need. So I painted this piece here. So it's this piece here, this gentleman, which you all see it, it's this gentleman here. So I was walking through the woods one day. And I came across this little cottage, and a man sitting there, had a, had, he had a blanket over it, and he had his hands down the back end. I don't know what he was doing, but when I looked closely, I realised he was Pete Stringfellow. <laughs> and he said to me, he recognised me, and he said, Tallulah, he said, will you perform at one of my clubs? I said, no, no I won't. He said, because if this dress comes off, everything comes off. <laughs> it's not attached. <laughs> And, uh, but he said, but I will paint you. So this is a, this is a nice little painting of Peter Stringfellow just enjoying himself. It's not the used to go I don't know what you're thinking now, Mrs. <laughs> just enjoying a nice relaxing sit down in the sun. Filthy, filthy mind. I can see that grin. Yeah, it's, what, it's, it's not the chap that your mum used to go out to see in the... No, oh, no, it's a different, that's a different man. <laughs> yes. His name was Benjamin Grimm. Okay. And if it, and I just made that up on the spot. And if you don't know, I just made that up on the spot. You won't very funny. That's why. <laughs> right. This next piece is very interesting. I'm just going to have to push a couple of people this way. Um, yes. Now, this piece was made by putting empty packets of Cadbury's roses on a glass table <laughs> and projecting it onto a wall, and then they painted over the colours it painted. Now, I don't know if that's a fact, but. It, it's the only thing I think it could be. Is <laughs> anyone else? What? Is anyone else have any ideas? What it could be? Oh, we're gonna have a stimulating conversation about that. Oh. That's what we're doing here. What do we think it could be? It kind of looks like your outfit a little bit. Yes. I wouldn't inspire you. I like that. Anyway, I'm going to move you on from this beautiful splash of colour to some very, very creepy, spooky, eerie picture. Are we ready for this? It's very creepy. Yes. Come on, follow me around. Follow me on the top. Okay, so this is a painting of one of the murderous ghost cows of the Gower. <laughs> now the artist involved took his life in his hands because the, has the legend has it of the Gower, and this is well known. If you see one of the killer cows of the Gower, they come into your room at night and they stamp on your They stamp on your they when you sleep. Unlike the murderous killer sheep of the Gower, who haven't bite you on the ass when you sleep. I had that once and I had to buy a new one from Dunhill. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to this. Now, well, this is a favourite one of mine. This is the sand dunes on Swansea Beach. 
Now, I am in this picture, but you can't quite see because I am in the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> you might be wondering what I'm doing in the hedge. Well, I was stroking a furry thing. It was a gerbil. I found it. I nursed it back to hell. <laughs> now it lives in my hair. <laughs> So, like I said, a lot of personal connections with the gallery. But now, we're going to talk about something a bit technical. We're going to talk about perspectives. Perspective. It's really difficult sometimes to draw faces. And nothing exactly like that more than some of these. <laughs> so this is a painting of Dylan Thomas's wife. Oh, she was quite a big tea in a day. Let me make that up. That is what this painting is. However, it does look like her face is being pushed up against a glass frame. <laughs> or as if she is made out of a giant hat. Now, she didn't look like that in real life, but the artist can't draw. <laughs> That's why that looks like a giant Now, one of the other things is important to know is this is good. Now, if you see a massive hand in this painting, now, some might say that the reason she has massive hands is because from a working class background, and actually the mass of hands is a deliberate thing to amplify her working class roots. And that would be quite a smart answer if it weren't for the fact that I happen to know the artist and he can't do hands. <laughs> Which is why they're so big. Well, but I'm gonna. One, that one can do hands, but not faces. He can't do faces. He <laughs> can't do faces, can he? Well spotted. Some people say that's actually uh, quite a sad picture about a ter terrible disaster in Wales, which I won't go into. But maybe it's just that he can't draw faces. That could be that as well. That had occurred to me. But this painting here, so is anyone familiar with the song Lady in Red? Lady in Red? Who yeah. sang Lady in Red? Because I can't remember. Krista Berg. Krista Berg. Well, Robert Francis Davis, the leader of the council, once told me a story, and he wouldn't lie to me. <laughs> but he's the cabinet member for culture, and he actually told me this, and this is true. But this inspired that song because Krista Berg was visiting Swansea and saw this on the wall. He saw this on the wall, and he said, "Who is that beautiful painting? Who is that woman?" And he said, "Look, read." It says there, and he did. And then he wrote, "Lady in Red." So that's beautiful, isn't it? That's so nice. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And it's a nice connection because that song is world famous. So the gallery's got a connection to one of the most famous songs in the world. Right. So next time somebody asks you, what's that song about? Who do you think that song is? You could say, it's that lady there whose name I can't pronounce. Yes. <laughs> from the Mabinagion, but I can say the Mabinagion. It's a character from the Mabinagion, from the, the folk tales of the Mabinagion. It's fun to say Mabinagion. <laughs> that concludes my tour. Um, if you enjoyed it, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I don't know anything else to say about it. So. <laughs>